Welcome to another Fast Tips video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I am your instructor, Richard Rost. In today's video, I'm going to show you how to show paid orders between two dates in Microsoft Access. Now, advanced users, stick around because we're going to do it first with a query using static criteria for the beginners. Then I'll show you again using parameter values where the user can enter the parameter value and type in the dates when the query runs. Then I'll show you how to use form fields with default values to supply the dates based on the current date, and the user can change them. All right, getting a little more advanced. Then I'll show you how to make a button using the command button wizard to open the query. And then for the more advanced users, I'll show you how to do it with a little bit of VBA. So there's something in this video for everybody, beginner to advanced. You ready? Here we go. Before we get started, make sure you've at least watched my Access Beginner 1 class. It's four hours long. It teaches you all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's absolutely free. It's on my website. It's on my YouTube channel. I'll put a link down below in the description so you can just click on it and go watch it and come on back. And also make sure you know how to use Access Query Criteria. That's putting criteria in your query. Go watch this video too. Okay, here I am in my Tech Help free template. This is a free database. You can download a copy off my website if you want. Now, I modified the order table a little bit. I added some more orders, of course, and I added an order total in here. Now, normally, when we do our invoicing system and our order entry, we have a separate order detail table that includes the line items for each invoice. But for this class, I just kept it simple. Normally, you'd make a query to put together that order total, but I'm just using the table for now, okay? So we got the important information, which is the order ID, the order date, whether it's paid or not, the description of the order, yeah, I, had, I had some fun with this one. And then of course the order total. Now the boss says, I wanna see all the orders between two dates, let's say March 3rd and March 13th, all right? And I only wanna see them if they're paid. So let's go make a query, I'm gonna close this down. Let's go to create, query design. I'm going to bring in my table which is my order T, close that. Bring in the fields that you care about from the table. Let's say you wanna see the order ID, the order date, whether it's paid, the description and the order total. First thing I'm gonna do is set a criteria for the is paid right there. We wanna make that true, true or yes. And if I run my query now, you can see there's a list of all of the paid orders from all dates. All right, let's add a date criteria. Now we're gonna use the between keyword. So come right here in the criteria field and I'll zoom in so you can see this better. Shift F2, that zooms us in. And I'm gonna say between. Now I use the ISO date format for all of my dates. So I'm gonna be 2023-03-03, that's March 3rd, and 2023-03-13. Okay, it's year, month, day, as it should be. If you wanna learn more about ISO dates, I'll put a link down below for my ISO date video. I'll hit okay, and notice that Access puts the little pound symbols around the dates, that's okay, let Access do that. Here, I'll, I'll zoom in again so you can see it, see? That's what Access does, dates have to be between those, but usually Access is smart enough to put them there for you. In case it doesn't, then you gotta put them there yourself. As a quick side note, for those of you who regularly watch my videos, notice how the font kinda changed here. This is a display bug that is currently in one, the latest Access version. The guys over at Access Forever made a mention of that in one of the recent posts. You can see some of the, the aberrations that occur here. So yeah, be careful about that. Uh, they, they said there's gonna be a fix by the 14th of March. It's currently March 10th, so hopefully they get that fix out. Yeah, there you can see it right there. I'll put a link to their post down below as well. All right, so anyways, if I go ahead and run this query now, there you go. You can see all the records between March 3rd and March 30th. Now you gotta be, be careful, you gotta be, be, you gotta be careful using that between keyword because if you have dates with times in them, it might not always give you the right values because for example, if you've got a uh, an order in the system on March 13th at 6 p.m., then that record won't show. I got a whole separate video called Between Wrong when the between gives you wrong values. I'll put a link to that down below in the link section as well. 
But if you have just date values in here without times, you don't have to worry about that. Now you might not want to hard code that date in here into the criteria because you're stuck with that. And if you want the user to be able to change that value, they got to know how to come in here and design a query and all that stuff. So you might want to make prompts for them so they can type in whatever they want when this runs. So we're going to come in here and replace each one of these with a parameter. So I'm going to put inside of square brackets, I'm going to put start date. And then over here inside of square brackets end date, just like that between start date and end date. And the user will be prompted with whatever you put between those brackets. Just don't use the name of a field in the table. Hit OK. And run it. And under start date. Now, if you're typing in dates from the current year, you don't need to specify the year. So I can just say 3-3 and 3-13. And boom, there we go. That's called a parameter query. And again, got a video for it. There it is. Go watch that. Lots of good stuff. I got a, I got a video for everything, pretty much. <laughs> All right, so let's go back to design view and we can save this query now. Control S. We'll call this order between date Q. And my personal preference is I try to name all of my objects in the singular form. Just because later on when you're doing programming or you're making more complicated, you know, SQL statements, you don't have to wonder, okay, is it orders between dates or is it order between dates or is it orders between ah, I just try to keep everything singular if I can. It, it, it gives me less of a headache later on when it was actually orders between dates, right? Customer Q instead of customers Q, that kind of stuff. Keeping everything singular just makes sense. All right, so now I can close this guy and if I want to run it again, I can double click on it. Okay, I got to type in the start date again, 3, 3, 3, 13. All right, got my information. I got to run a slightly different one. Let's run it again. Okay, I got a 3, 3 to maybe 3, 14. So you can see every time you run this query, you have to type in those values. Wouldn't it be nice if you didn't have to do that? Maybe you could run it from a form and have form fields that supply those dates. And maybe those dates could be defaulted to, let's say, oh, I don't know, a week ago and today. Let's try that. Right here on my main menu. Now we're getting a little more advanced now. Let's go into design view. Okay, here's today's date. And let's say that I wanna get the sales from the previous week. All right, so this guy, what is, what is his name? His name is current date, okay? Um, but I want the user to be able to change it. Okay, so I'm gonna default it to the current date instead of forcing it to always be the current date. So I'm going to move the control source from here, get rid of that and go over to data and in default value, put that. See what I did right there? Okay. Control source means you are always going to be this. You cannot change it. All right. Default value means I'm going to start you off at that, but you could change it if you want to. Okay. And since we're doing that, let's rename it too. Let's rename it to end date. That'll be the end date in our query. Okay. And in fact, I'll change this to end date like that. All right, now we need the start date. Now you could say the start date is automatically like date minus seven to get a week, or we'll just copy that and make a start date field. All right, so let's copy this, copy, paste, and I'm going to rearrange these because obviously you want start date on top. So we'll do it like that. All right, so this guy will be start date. Okay, we'll change the label, start date. And his default value is going to be equals date minus seven. Okay. Want to learn more about default values? There's a video for you. Again, I'll put a link down below. All right, so let's slide these up right there. Okay, save that. Let's close it and open up the main menu again. I got a button up here that does it. Boop. There you go. All right. So the start date and the end date. Look at that. It defaults to today's date and then today's date minus seven. Now in my query, instead of prompting the user for this stuff, what I want to do is say, hey, get the values from this form. So let's go to our query. Where are you at? Design view. All right. The name of this form is the main menu F. It's right there. So what I'm going to do is close this thing down here. Come into here. We're going to shift up to to zoom in. And instead of start date, we're going to reference 
forms, main menu, F, and that's an exclamation point, start date. Okay, and then the end date is going to be, we can just copy and paste, watch this. Copy that right to there, paste it over here, end date, just like that. So between start date, forms, exclamation point, main menu F, that's the form it's on, exclamation point, start date, and the end date. So instead of the user typing in those values, it's just gonna get them from the main menu form. Hit okay, save it, close it, and now when I open that query, look at that, it doesn't prompt you, but it gives you the same results. And now it's easy to change this if you wanna go back to the first, let's say, change it there, and then run your query, and look at that. Isn't that cool? And what if you wanna put a little button right there to open your query for you? Well, guess what? Design view. Now, normally I love VBA programming. I can do this with one line of code, but if you're a newbie, if you're a beginner, that's okay. You can use the command button wizard. Find the button in the toolbox, put it right there. Go to miscellaneous, run query, next. Give it the name of your query right there. Next. I like text myself, right? Show sales. Next. Give the button a meaningful name. Show sale button BTN. Keep it singular, right? And then finish. All right. And now save it. Close it. Open it back up again. And boom. There's your query. See that? Isn't that cute? Change the date. Run it. There you go. All right, I'm gonna go a little more advanced for those of you who wanna learn some VBH, a little tiny bit more, okay? All right, let's get rid of that button. I'll show you how easy VBA programming is. All right, drop a button on there again. This time, cancel the wizard. Change the caption, show sales. Okay, let's open up the button's properties. Give it its name, go to all, right here, show sale button, like we did before. Now, we're gonna right click on that button, go to build event, that'll open up our code editor, right? Our VBA code editor. All right, right down here, we're between show sale button click. This is what happens when you click on that button. Okay, we're gonna put one line of code in here. Do command dot open query, and then the query's name, order between date Q. That's it, that's all you need. And that's a whole lot easier, I think, than running through that wizard. Once you learn how to do this stuff in VBA, it's super simple, okay? Save it, close it, close it, open it, click it, boom. See that? Super easy to do. I love Access, isn't Access awesome? It's my favorite program. All right, if you wanna learn more about getting a value from an open form like we did, how we got the value off the main menu, right? Here's a video for you called the form name video. Go watch that. And if you wanna learn more about programming in VBA, which once you learn a little bit of VBA, your access database has become tremendously more powerful, even with just a few commands. Go watch my intro to VBA video. It's about 20 minutes long. It's, it's, it teaches you everything you need to know to get started. And if you wanna learn more about this access query stuff, I have a whole level, level five beginner, that covers query criteria, multiple and and or conditions, parameter queries, wildcards, all kinds of stuff. Beginner level five, okay? You'll find links to all this stuff down below in the description below the video. So there you go. There's your fast tip for today. In tomorrow's video, I'm gonna show you how to do something similar, but we're gonna show sales total by day of the week. This is a question that came into me. One of my students wants to be able to see how do I take all my sales and then sum them up and show them by day of the week. So Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on. She wants to know which days of the week are her best days for sales and the slowest days for sales. So that's coming up in tomorrow's video. So we'll see you then. Live long and prosper, and I'll see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up and post any comments you may have. I do try to read and answer all of them as soon as I can. Make sure you subscribe to my channel, which is completely free, and click on the bell icon to select all to receive notifications when new videos are posted. Make sure you click the show more link down below the video to find additional resources and links. 
You'll see a list of other videos, additional information related to the current topic, free lessons, and lots more. YouTube no longer sends out email notifications when new videos are posted, so if you'd like to get an email every time I post a video, click on the link to join my mailing list. Even if you don't want to become a member, feel free to donate to my tip jar. Your patronage is greatly appreciated and will help keep these free videos coming. I got puppies to feed. How do you become a member? Click on the Join button below the video. After you click the Join button, you'll see a list of all the different membership levels that are available, each with its own special perks. Silver members and up will get access to all of my extended cut tech help videos, one free beginner class each month, and more. Gold members get access to download all of the sample databases that I build in my tech help videos, plus my code vault, where I keep tons of different functions that I use. You'll also get a higher priority if you decide to submit any tech help questions to me, and you'll get one free expert class each month after you finish the beginner series. Platinum members get all the previous perks, plus even higher priority for tech help questions, access to all of my full beginner courses for every subject, and one free developer class each month after you finish the expert classes. These are the full-length courses found on my website, not just for access, too. I also teach Word, Excel, Visual Basic, and lots more. You can now become a Diamond sponsor and have your name or company name listed on a sponsors page that will be shown in each video as long as you're a sponsor. You'll get a shout-out in the video and a link to your website or product in the text below the video and on my website. But don't worry, these free tech help videos are going to keep coming. As long as you keep watching them, I'll keep making more, and they'll always be free. Now, if you have not yet tried my free Access Level 1 course, check it out now. It covers all the basics of Microsoft Access. It's over four hours long, and I just updated it for 2021. You can find it on my website or on my YouTube channel. I'll include a link below that you can click on. And also, if you like Level 1, Level 2 is just $1. Yep, that's all. One dollar. And it's free for all members of my YouTube channel at any level, even supporters. Want to have your question answered in a video just like this one? Visit my tech help page on my website. You can send me your question there. While you're on my site, feel free to stop by the Access Forum. Lots of good conversations happening there. Be sure to follow my blog, find me on Twitter, and of course, YouTube. Once again, my name is Richard Ross. Thank you for watching this tech help video brought to you by AccessLearningZone.com. I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something today. I'll see you again soon.